Well, let us do it. Petroza, how Ready long? Why are we fighting? Are. Everybody just calm down and focus. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most difficult dishes to master. Yes, chef. Give up, you like For this list, we're looking at foods that take quite a bit of skill to prepare correctly. We're considering complete dishes only. So despite its complicated process, Bernays sauce and condiments will not be making an appearance. What's the hardest dish you've ever tried to make? Share your endeavors in the comments below. Number 10. Beef Wellington Puff pastry presents enough of a challenge on its own, but wrapping it around beef tenderloin, duxelles and pâté is even more difficult. The preparation varies between chefs, but the basic idea remains the same. What is wrong with that? It's the wrong way. First, the chef sears beef tenderloin in a pan, allowing it to brown on the outside but remain rare in the middle. In the same pan, the chef prepares duxelles, a mushroom-based mixture, which is then combined with pâté. This gives it such depth of flavor. You fry it before you chop it up. Yeah, okay. just for about four minutes, cook it up nice, and we're gonna just whiz that up to a little pâté, super simple. The pâté mixture is spread over the tenderloin, and then the entire dish is wrapped in puff pastry and baked until golden. The combination of different techniques and patience make this savory dish challenging, but very worth it. Now, look at the beef. It's absolutely perfectly cooked because they've rested beautifully, okay? Number nine, saint Honoré cake. This complex cake was named after the patron saint of bakers, so of course it involves several challenging pastry elements. Puff pastry, already difficult as previously mentioned, serves as the base for this intricate dessert, with delicate pot of choux around the edge. Tiny profiteroles or cream puffs are covered in crunchy caramelized sugar, providing a myriad of textures before being placed on top of the pot of choux base. The entire concoction is then filled with a flavored pastry cream. Not only will you need a nap after making this intricate dessert, but you'll probably need one after eating it too. Number eight, souffle. This delicate, sweet, or savory egg-based dish can be as high as your hopes prior to making it, or as deflated as you feel when you goof it. I have to commend you on having the balls to put a souffle out there. The dish originated in France in the 18th century, and it consists of two major components. The base of the dish can consist of custard, puree, or cream sauce. This base provides the vast majority of the flavor and can vary depending on whether the dish is sweet or savory. The most challenging part is the soft, fluffy top, made from egg whites. If you overbeat them, they're not velvety. They begin looking a little flaky or speckled. It's hard to describe. But look at, as you look at this, they have a sheen, which is beautiful. If you, if you find that, they're, that they are a little bit dry and they, they have speckled rather than having this sheen, they're not going to beat easily into the into your souffle mixture. If it does happen, if you've overbeaten, add another egg white or two and rebeat them. Once the dish is cooked, it should be handled carefully and eaten pretty quickly in order to prevent a disappointingly premature collapse. Lovely. Lovely. Nice, nice, nice. I'm dying to get in there, you know that. Mmm. Is it mm. good? That, absolutely delicious. Number seven, galantine. So far, all of our dishes have involved pastry, but this meaty concoction is quite different. Dating back to the 17th century, this French dish has a few variations nowadays, but its classical preparation is quite complex. First, the chef must debone a whole chicken. No use of the knife, as you can see. You know, my finger, that's it, along the bone, removing again that filet. The chicken meat is then combined with truffles, veal, spices, and other ingredients to create force meat, which is a uniform meaty concoction. The force meat is then wrapped in the chicken skin, tied and poached in broth. Once the dish cools and gels, it's served cold. As complicated as the dish is, galantine was actually once used in the siege of Leningrad to feed starving citizens. Number six, salt-crusted fish. 
The trickiest aspect of this dish is that despite being completely encrusted in salt, the fish is not supposed to taste overly salty. The dish starts out with a gutted fish that still has the scales attached. The inside of the fish is seasoned, and some chefs also add aromatics such as lemon and thyme sprigs. The fish is then crusted in salt until it's completely covered. So take your salt and you just want to pack it in just right on top of all those herbs, the citrus, the fish. Because the fish still has its skin and scales, the salt doesn't penetrate through to the flesh. Instead, it simply creates a nice crust that retains moisture and helps keep the fish from drying out. When it becomes a nice sandy-like texture, then it's perfect to encrust the fish. The entire concoction is baked, and once it's finished cooking, it makes for both a beautiful presentation and a succulent dish. Plus, cracking away the salt crust is fun. Okay. Look at that. Number five, macaron. This is one of the most iconic confections, and also one of the most complicated. Modern macaron usually fall into two camps, Italian and French, and the difference primarily lies in how the meringue is prepared. In both preparations, however, sugar, egg whites, and ground almonds are mixed together, piped onto a cookie sheet, and baked. Unlike the last dish, moisture is the enemy here as it can threaten the integrity of the pastry. And I think that that's the part that actually is a bit of a misconception because I think people are sometimes so worried about over mixing it that they actually don't quite mix it enough. And that can be just as problematic for a macaron. Once the cookies cool, they can be eaten alone. But traditional Parisian style macarons are styled into a sandwich with jam or frosting in the middle. While the preparation is difficult, it's even harder to decide what flavor you want to indulge in. Number four, Baked Alaska. Move over, George R.R. R. Martin. This is the real song of ice and fire. Combining ice cream and flames seems counterintuitive, but therein lies the difficulty of this impressive dessert. When I put it in the oven, I'm actually a little bit proud that I've actually pulled this off. Cake makes up the base. It's then topped with a mound of ice cream, and both components are frozen until the ice cream hardens. Those ice creams get frozen in standard 13-inch baking pans. You bake up a chiffon cake or sheet cake, but I'll be really honest with you, you can make this from cake mix at the market. While the concoction is chilling, the chef makes a meringue using egg whites and sugar. The frozen dome created is then covered in it. And here comes the tricky part, setting ice on fire. From bait in front of your very own eyes. Baked Alaska, done. Chefs differ on how to accomplish this, with some taking the traditional approach in baking the dessert in the oven until the meringue browns. How gorgeous are these? Woo! However, some chefs use kitchen torches to get that beautiful golden color. Number three, turducken. When one bird isn't enough, maybe a chicken inside a duck inside a turkey can do the trick. And then it's white meat, dark meat, white meat, dark meat, white meat. That's, so it's that's beautiful. Very, that's very inclusive and of you. While this particular dish is one of the newest ones on this list, it has been a long time coming. The ancient Romans created similar roasts, and the 17 bird rôti sans pareil, French for roast without equal, was developed in 1807 in France. Now here's the tough part getting it all sewed up and not making a mess. The turducken's specific origin remains unclear, but it is believed to stem from Louisiana. Because of the knife skills involved, a surgeon even helped with the original technique. Stock pot. That was money, dude. Yeah. Deboning the birds, keeping the skin intact, and ensuring all components cook evenly takes quite a bit of skill. But it does make for a striking presentation. Ta-da! Number two, croque en bouche. With this stunning dessert, French pastries make their final appearance on our list. The complex confection was invented in the early 1800s. It consists of profiteroles, which are made from delicate shoe pastry and are hollow, before being filled with pastry cream, whipped cream, or ice cream. Now, at no point when you're making a pastry cream can you stop stirring. So just about done, I'm gonna add butter. So when you add butter to pastry cream, what it does it makes it really, really smooth. They're then arranged in a towering formation. Finally, the profiteroles are covered in fine spun sugar, creating an absolutely beautiful dessert that is almost too good to eat. What has happened? We've made 
an unbelievable, super tall, huge croquembouche. And I can't wait, most importantly, to eat some of it. Combining complex pastry skills and some engineering into one dessert is a daunting task, but the results are worth it. I love that cream pie. That is so good. Yeah, delicious. Oh. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, fugu. The rest of the dishes on this list have been difficult in their complexity, but this one is difficult in a much simpler way. If you make one small mistake when preparing the delicious fugu for consumption, the diner could die an agonizing death. In Japan, preparation of the fish is highly regulated. In fact, unless you have undergone at least three years of intensive training, you cannot legally prepare and serve it. One tiny nick of the fish's internal organs can contaminate the meat with tetrodotoxin. All it takes is one bad bite. If consumed, this poison can lead to paralysis, asphyxiation, and eventually death. Despite the risk, this delicacy is a beloved dish and an important part of Japanese cuisine. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.